Question 4. A scientist investigated the effect of temperature on the rate of photosynthesis in one species of plant. Photosynthesis involves enzyme-controlled reactions. These were cut from a leaf and kept at different temperatures. The total surface area of this disc was kept at the same for each temperature. The volume of oxygen that was produced by the leaf disc was measured and used to estimate the rate of photosynthesis. The results are shown in figure 4.1. So on the x-axis, the temperature was measured between 20 to 55 degrees Celsius and the y-axis here was the rate of photosynthesis, meaning the speed of photosynthesis and the unit of measurement is arbitrary units. Question A. Identify the optimum temperature for photosynthesis in figure 4.1. The optimum temperature would be the best temperature at which the rate of photosynthesis is the highest, which is 40 degrees Celsius. Question B. Explain the results shown in figure 4.1. And you are given with 6 marks for this question. When asked to describe on a graph, we can talk about the trend of the graph at different temperatures. We can see that as the temperature increases, the rate of photosynthesis is increasing as well. This is because there is an increase in the kinetic energy of the enzyme and substrate molecules involved in the photosynthesis. As the enzyme and substrate molecules move faster, more successful collisions occur between them which speeds up the rate of photosynthesis. This trend continues until the optimum temperature is reached, and any further increase in temperature will lead to decrease of the rate of photosynthesis. This is because the enzyme starts to denature. So we're going to write all that in our answer space given here. Pay attention here that the command word being used is explain. This means that you are required to answer your questions with full sentences. To do this, you can use keywords like because to help you give reason for your statement. Next, question C. Carbon dioxide was supplied in excess at each temperature during the investigation. Explain why. Again, you have a command word of explain over here. You can use the keyword because to help you explain your reasons. In chapter 6 of plant nutrition, we will learn about limiting factors. And there are three main factors which limit the rate of photosynthesis. Temperature, light intensity, and carbon dioxide. So the reason why carbon dioxide was supplied in excess here is because we want to ensure that carbon dioxide is not a limiting factor. Saying this will only provide you with one mark and you need another mark to answer this. Since we are still discussing on limiting factor, by ensuring carbon dioxide is not the limiting factor, you can make temperature here the limiting factor. Question D. Suggest why not all of the oxygen produced by the leaf is released. Note here that the command word is suggest. We are not expected to know anything about why some of the oxygen produced is not being released. But we are expected to apply our knowledge, the structure of the leaf, or how oxygen is used in a plant to help us answer this question. At night, when photosynthesis does not take place, aerobic respiration takes place, and oxygen is required for this reaction. So some of the oxygen that is not being released will be used for aerobic respiration. And if you look at the structure of the leaf, you will know that there are air spaces in the leaf in the spongy mesophyll. So some of the oxygen that is not being released will remain there. Question E. Describe the role of chlorophyll in photosynthesis. Chlorophyll is a green pigment that is found in chloroplasts within plant cells. The role of chlorophyll is to absorb light energy and transfer this energy into chemical energy for the synthesis of carbohydrates such as glucose. Question 5 Part A Describe two ways in which the circulatory system of a fish is different from the circulatory system of a mammal. This is a question from Chapter 9, Transport in Animals. We are required to describe how the circulatory system of a fish is different from of a mammal. In the circulatory system of fish, it has two-chambered heart compared to mammals of four-chambered heart. You are only required to describe for how the fish is different, so you are not required to describe the circulatory system of a mammal. The second difference is that in fish, the circulatory system is single circulation, 
whereas in mammal it's double circulation. Single circulation means that for every one circuit of the body, the blood passes through the heart once. Unlike mammals where the blood passes through the heart twice. Next, question B. Explain the advantages of a double circulatory system. They have given you three marks. The command word being used here is explain. Explain questions need a greater detail compared to a describe or a state questions. The double pumping system of the heart means that one side can pump at a lower pressure than the other. So the side that pumps blood to the lungs is at a lower pressure. Therefore, blood can travel slowly here and ensure there is time for oxygen to diffuse into the blood. Secondly, the other side of the heart pumps the blood at a much higher pressure and this goes off to the body. Another advantage of double circulatory system is that there is no mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. Always pay attention to your common word and the number of mark given in the question to know exactly how much you should write. Next, question C. Figure 5.1 shows part of the circulatory system of a mammal. Let's first identify all the blood vessels in this circulatory system. Part A here is pointing to the lungs. The vessel that goes out of the lungs is the pulmonary vein and the vessel that goes into the lungs is the pulmonary artery. And over here is the heart. The vessel that brings blood out of the heart into the rest of the body is aorta. And the vessel that brings back the blood from the body into the heart is the vena cava. Over here, there is a hepatic artery. Hepatic artery is the vessel responsible to bring blood into the liver, meaning that this is the liver and B is pointing towards the liver. So the vessel that carries the blood out of the liver would be the hepatic vein. Now there's another vessel that goes into the liver from the gut. So C here must be the gut. And the vessel responsible from the gut into the vein is known as the hepatic portal vein. Given here is the renal vein. Renal vein is the blood vessel that comes out of the kidney, meaning that over here D is the kidney. And the vessel that goes into the kidney is the renal artery, leaving us with E which is the rest of the body. The bigger vessel here is the artery branching out into arterioles and then becomes the capillaries. And before it turns into the veins, over here is the venule. Okay, now we can answer the questions. Part 1. State the letter from figure 5.1 that identifies where these processes occur. Absorption of the products of digestion into the blood happens in the gut. So that would be C. Next, the excretion of carbon dioxide from the body. Carbon dioxide is released from the lungs. And the lungs is part A. Next, formation of urine. Formation of urine happens in the kidney of the body which is part D. And lastly, the production of bile. Bile is produced and secreted in the liver of the body which is part B. Part 2. Identify the name of the blood vessel labeled X in figure 5.1. The blood vessel labeled X is the hepatic portal vein which moves from the gut into the liver. Question D. Describe the role of liver in excretion. Excretion is the removal of waste products from the body. Many digested food molecules in the small intestine absorbed into the blood are carried into the liver for assimilation. Assimilation is when food molecules are converted to other molecules of the body. When excess amino acid is absorbed into the blood that are no longer needed to make protein, these amino acids cannot be stored into the body. So they are broken down in a process called deamination. What happens here is that the enzymes in the liver will split up the amino acid molecules and convert the nitrogen molecule in the amino acid into ammonia. Ammonia is highly toxic and so it is immediately converted into urea. And the urea dissolves in the blood and is taken to the kidney to be excreted. The liver is also responsible for the breakdown of lactic acid during aerobic respiration. Question 6 Part A State the names of the two hormones released by the ovaries. You will learn about the hormones of the menstrual cycle in chapter 16. The hormones that is being released by the ovaries are estrogen and progesterone. Pay attention that these are hormones released by the ovaries. And if you are asked for the hormones released by the pituitary gland, that would be the follicle stimulating hormone and the luteinizing hormone. 
Next, question B. During pregnancy, antibodies are acquired by the fetus from the mother. State the organ the antibodies cross to reach the fetus. During pregnancy, there are several substances that move across the mother into the fetus and from the fetus into the mother. All of this take place in the placenta of the mom. Question C. A baby was breastfed for 6 months. The concentration of antibodies in the baby's blood obtained from the breast milk and the concentration of the antibodies made by the baby itself were being measured. Figure 6.1 shows the results. So y-axis here is the concentration of the antibodies and the x-axis is from the month of 0 to 12 and at 6 months, the breastfeeding has stopped. Part 1. Complete the sentences to describe the changes in antibody concentrations in the baby. After birth, the concentration of antibodies acquired from the mother decreases rapidly to zero arbitrary units at blank months. This is pretty straightforward. It decreases rapidly until zero when it was at six months. Antibodies start being produced by cells called under the chapter Components of Blood, you will learn about white blood cells. You will come across lymphocytes and phagocytes. Lymphocyte is responsible for producing antibodies, whereas phagocytes will carry out phagocytosis by engulfing and digesting pathogens. So antibodies being produced by cells is called the lymphocyte. The total concentration of antibodies in the baby from both sources is blank units at 4 months. So at 4 months, the antibodies being produced by the mother is 18 arbitrary units and by the baby itself is 38 arbitrary units. So the total of this being added up together would give us 56 arbitrary units. The concentration of antibodies acquired from the mother and the concentration antibodies produced by the baby are the same at blank months. So it is the same at this point which is at 3 months. Part 2 Describe the benefits of breastfeeding a baby for the first 6 months of life. You will learn about diseases and immunity in chapter 10. In this chapter, you will learn about passive immunity and breastfeeding. Passive immunity is a fast-acting, short-term defense against pathogen by antibodies acquired from another individual. These antibodies can be passed from mother to infant via breast milk. So this is important because it can help the young infant to fight off infection. Apart from immunity, breastfeeding could also help the baby and the mother to bond. Next, part 3. State two ways other than breastfeeding that a baby can acquire immunity. Apart from passive immunity, there is also active immunity. Next, question D. Explain the importance of the shape of an antibody. Your command word here is explained, so make sure you give a detailed answer for this. You will learn about antibodies and antigen under Chapter 10, Diseases and Immunity. Antibodies are produced by the lymphocyte to fight off a pathogen. The shape of antibody is very important as it has to be complementary to the shape of the antigen so that this can bind to the antigen and destroy the pathogen. Next, antibodies are proteins. State the chemical elements present in all proteins that are also found in carbohydrates and fats. The chemical element in protein that can also be found in carbohydrate and fats is carbon, oxygen and hydrogen. Thank you for watching guys. For the next video, I will be making biology paper 6. If you find this video helpful, please subscribe, like and comment. Thank you. Bye bye. Take care.